Hello everyone, this is Cardmates. Many poker players have heard about the concept of variance, but most of them don't understand what it is. This video will introduce you to the concept of poker variance and help you know how important it is to come to terms with it. Poker is a game of statistical distribution. Every hand we play is at the mercy of probability. Our goal should be to make decisions that can tilt the balance of probability in our favor and not favor opponents. However, there is always a chance that by making right, profitable long-term decisions, we will still lose. For example, we will face a bad bid or simply not improve our hand. This situation can happen to us over an extended period, misleading and making us think that our decisions making process is flawed, when in fact it's not. So this is what we call variance. Let's get deeper on the concept of variance. Variance in poker is in fact a series of ups and downs, or in other words, negative and positive turns in the results of our game. More specifically, it is the difference between individual results in the short term and the average of the results that we expected to see over the long term based on the process of making the right decisions. A negative variance occurs when we're doing worse than our expected long range value. Expected value, EV, is the amount of money that you, on average, expected to win or lose by performing in a specific action in the game. Conversely, when we're doing better than our expected long term value, positive variance occurs. To summarize, variance is the series of ups and downs that occur when we're playing poker. More specifically, it is the difference between individual performance in the short term and the average performance that we expected to see over the long term. Let's talk about negative variance. When our actual results are below the EV, we experience negative variance. This happens if we're doing worse than it should be from the point of view of statistics. When poker players experience negative variance, you will occasionally hear phrases like I have a black stick or I cut a downstream. A negative variance occurs when according to statistics you were the favorite in the hand but unfortunately you lose. During periods when these losses start to accumulate, any player, good or bad, is exposed to the risk of quickly catching a downstream. One important thing to note about negative variance is that losing a play doesn't mean that you are playing poorly. You can play the hand well, go all in as the favorite in the hand and still lose. For example, if we go all in preflop with a pair of aces against a pair of kings, then we have 82% of equity to win the hand. However, this does not mean that we'll always win in such a situation. One of the most common misconceptions is that people think they will always win when they go all in preflop with pocket aces, but they're not. In our example, a pair of kings has 18% to win all in against a pair of aces. If we repeat this scenario a hundred times in a row, we expect a pair of kings to win 18 times out of 100. Given the variance and unexpected results, the pair of kings has the potential to win multiple times in a row, despite the low likelihood of this happening. When this does happen, those who don't understand variance tend to get upset not realize that even the underdog, in this case, a pair of kings, has a chance of winning. Now let's talk a little bit about positive variance. On the other side of the coin is a positive variance. It arises in cases when we're doing better than it should be according to the statistics. That is, when we're in the upstream. Let's take the same scenario as an example. All in preflop, pair of kings versus pair of aces. If our aces face a pair of kings, when all in preflop two hands in a row and we win both, then we will experience positive variance. When poker players experience positive variance, they will say something like, I'm in God mode right now. Poker players prefer positive variance to negative variance. And we know why. 
understanding variance, a coin flip example. The easiest way to explain variance is to use a simple coin flip in scenario. With coin flip, there are two options, heads or tails, and in the long run, each option will fall out 50% of the time. Thus, if we flip a coin 100,000 times, we can expect to come up tails 50,000 times and the remaining 50,000 will be heads. But if we flip a coin 6 times, then any of the many possible outcomes can happen. The great thing about this coin flip example is that it's a good illustration of a standard coin flip situation of getting all in preflop with ace king versus a pair of queens. While the coin toss situation it's not a pure 50 50 scenario, it's close enough for our purpose. In our example, we'll assume heads is ace king and tails is a pair of queens. The following figures show examples of coin flips. These figures show that variance increases with smaller sample size but decreases with larger sample size. If we were to go on and do the coin toss with a much larger sample size, then at some point we would achieve the expected 50-50 results. The point of this example is to show you that you should expect increased variance with small samples, especially in poker. But as you play more hands, the variance dissipates as the sample size increases. The importance of variance. Why is it so important to understand and accept variance? Poker players who do not understand variance and the accompany up streaks and down streaks are more likely to play poorly and tilt. One bad bet is easier to take, but when you lose multiple times in a row, and you were the odds favorite to win, it can affect even the most seasoned pro and can also lead to tilt. Tilt is what we want to prevent. We can do this through understanding and accepting variance. Another important aspect of poker variance is the lock factor. Positive variance is what motivates bad players to play bad. Sometimes they go all in, get their draw and get paid if they play badly. This prevents them from going broke quickly and it also increases the likelihood that they will be in the game much longer, but in the end all of them will lose. Variance, especially the difference between long-term and short-term results, it's what makes the bad players think they can compete with the best players. Without the lock factor, bad players would find out about their weakness in the game much faster. The random aspects of poker, starting hands and cards on the board are all influenced by variance, giving even the worst player a chance to win the pot against the world's top players. Dispersion in practice Even the best players in the world face variance, both positive and negative. It's not uncommon for a good cash player to hit and lose 10 buy-ins in a row due to a downstream. Plus, Good clash players who play hundreds of thousands of hands a year can expect to find themselves in the inevitable and dangerous 15 to 20 buy-ins downstream. This is normal and to be expected since we are playing with large samples. These bands of dispersion can vary in duration and we never know how long they will last. Sometimes they will happen with a small sample of only 1000 or 2000 hands. In other cases, they will drag on for tens of thousands of hands and it seems that they will never end. On the other hand, players can hit up streaks with the same frequency. Remember, when we think about variance, we have to think about negative variance and downstreams and positive variance. This is upstrokes. The difference between variance and bad play. It is important to distinguish between variance and poor play. Some players may complain about failure when in reality most of what they consider to be negative variance is actually bad play. Your loss is not automatically variant or bad play and your win does not always mean good play or variance. It takes time to see the difference. What causes variance? This is nothing more than the randomness of the cards. 
If everything is going well or badly for us, then this is a coincidence. If we're lucky, the cards that are dealt will be in our favor. If we are unlucky, then the cards will be bad for us. Our jaws will not hit us, our strong hands will not hold, and we will lose many hands in the process. How long does the dispersion last? According to statistics, the variance is minimized over time. There is, the more hands we play, the less variance affects our expected results in the long run. Most of us, we tend to experience dispersion over short distance. However, it is uncommon for people to experience both positive and negative variance over extended periods of time. Perception of variance. When we understand what variance is, both positive and negative, we're less likely to let it affect our poker game. Those who understand variance, they realize they have no control over it and do not worry about it. They understand that it gets stronger in the short term and it will dissipate over time as they continue to play more hands. This is why so many good players tell us not to focus on the short term results, but instead advise us to focus on playing our best, whether we experience variance or not. If you guys like this video, please hit the button and subscribe to our channel. If you have more questions about poker, go to our website, cardmates.net.